I will welcome the participants that just joined in and we will begin the webinar now. So as promised, as announced, uh, this is going to be a webinar on how you can use Infranodus, a text network analysis tool, to visualize information using mind maps and how you can do this in a way that is much quicker than the traditional tools. Because usually uh, when we build a mind map, we start from a tree-like structure. There's a central idea and then it branches into the different deviations. And we're kind of pushed to think in a very hierarchical way that there is something like a main idea that we begin from. Then there are maybe four different sub branches of that idea. And then it goes on further and further and further into sub branches. And then if we want to start making connections between all those different ideas, it becomes very complicated using the tools that we have usually at our disposal. However, if you represent this information as a network, it's very easy because then you can use uh, the already existing methods to represent this information as a network graph and to see what are the main ideas, how they're connected, what are the most interesting parts inside and so on. So this is pretty interesting to work with. And as you can see on the screen share now, I put on an example of a mind map created using Infranodus. This one was actually when I was uh, just writing some things down about different word of vector models. Um, and uh, yeah, it becomes really interesting because you can quickly see what are the main ideas inside. So for example, if you look at the screen now, you'll see that it's mainly talking about vectors of documents. We can also get into the specific specifics of this uh, information. So for example, we see that there's quite a lot about the frequency of the terms. Uh, then there is a different cluster on word to vec models. Then we have a different cluster on LSA, you know, so you can really quickly see what is the main sort of uh, idea on how we can use this mind map. I just noticed that I cannot drag my screen because uh, of the Zoom setting feature. So I'm just going to stop sharing it for a moment and then share the whole desktop so that you can see uh, what I'm working on. So just a moment. Let me adjust this. Okay, here we go. Now you should see the full screen. Like this, it's going to be clear and nice. Okay, so to start with uh, how you can actually build a mind map using Infranodes. If you go to the apps, then you have the mind mapping app here. So you click on that app and then you will be able to start creating it. If you click on add here, you start writing. If you have any questions during this webinar, feel free to ask in the Q&A session or in the chat. I'm monitoring it and I'll be happy to answer during or after the talk. So usually how I like to begin is just to start with the first idea that comes into my head. And just to write, let's say that uh, degree is one of the measures of influence in a network. And here, all I need to do is to select degree. So I double click on it to select it, network and influence. And then I click save. And as you can see, it's added into the graph as a triplet. So it's a really quick way to get this information in. Then I can write between us centrality is another measure of influence in a network. And then again, I can select between a centrality network, influence, click save. And then as you can see, the whole thing is visualized here. I can just make sure that all the node labels are shown easily. Okay. So then I can move on and add some general idea like uh, a network is made out of nodes and edges. And then again, I double click network, nodes, edges, click save. This is added into the graph. And by the way, when I click on each node, I can see in which context it's used on the left side here. So it becomes a very useful way to get to the information I need very quickly. I can say that 
a degree shows how many edges a node has. So here we go, we select the words that we want to be the nodes in the network and then it's visualized here and we, we're gradually building a structure. As you can see, I didn't have to start from a central idea. I just started from the first thing that came to my head and then I continued writing in a free way. And you'll see later when I show you other kinds of mind maps that are more complex that it's a very easy way to get into your ideas or into your knowledge as well. So stay tuned to see this later. I will continue with the, this text. So for instance, I can say that modularity, so I can also start by the way typing from adding a hashtag, modularity uh, can be used to detect community structure in the network. Okay, so you can see we have network and then we have a new sort of connection here, community and modularity. And I can say that um, if modularity is high, the network is diverse. It has a diverse community structure. Okay, so then I can start building ideas and uh, not to kind of create everything from scratch. I'll show you what it comes to in the end as we're doing it over and over again. So here I prepared an example where I added some ideas in the same way about network science and I will show you what we get as a result. You see, um, I have here the central idea that is between the centrality. I have uh, some clusters. Each color represents a community of nodes that tend to co-occur more often together than with the rest of the network. So it already gives you an idea of the topical structure. So here we see that I used small world resilient propagation in the same context. But for example, then there is another context where I talk about nodes and edges and the degree of the nodes as well. So this becomes like a very nice visual way to represent your knowledge to actually let graph algorithms represent your knowledge in a way that can be readable after. And uh, here you have the analytics panel on the right side panel, which shows you the main topical groups. So for example, here it's between the centrality degree and nodes. One of them, if you click on it, you'll just see that group. Then you have community network diverse and then small world homogeneous propagation. And what's nice here is that once you build this mind map in that way, not only you can read it easily, visually, and uh, not be focused on the central idea, as you can see, it's really rhizomatic. So everything is connected to whatever you actually connected it to. So you can see that we have between the centrality here, um, it connects to communities, but for example, communities doesn't connect to the propagation and resilience. So that could also give me a nice idea of how I could actually make a connection between those two ideas using the same approach. Also, you have the insight panel here, which proposes you an action advice. So it analyzes the network structure that you create, your mind map, and then it proposes you uh, what two clusters of ideas you could connect to generate an interesting research question or an idea. So for instance, here we have, a, in this case, small world homogeneous propagation and then communities network diverse. So it asks us, what is the relation between small world networks that, and the, the idea of a homogeneous structure and how propagation works in that kind of structure? and uh, communities in the network. So then I can add a new idea. I can say that if a network has many distinct communities, then it has a diverse structure. Most small world networks will have pronounced communities. Okay, so I add this idea and it appears in the graph. And then 
I'll have uh, some more insight and more ideas generated. You can also use the tab here at the bottom, which recommends you what to do next to the graph. So instead of using the analytics panel, or if you don't have the skills of reading through the graph yourself, you can actually use this panel here at the bottom, which is always going to give you a new idea of what you could do in relation to the knowledge that you are encoding into your graph. So in this case, for instance, it says, open the Insight tab and the Analytics panel and try to think of a question that would link those two clusters. We already did that. So if I click on Proceed, it will make the suggestion. But then if I did that already, it will propose me the next idea if I click Proceed. It says that I'm too focused or too biased on the idea of communities between the centrality and small world. So I can try to develop the, the ideas on the periphery. Small world, homogeneous propagation, and networks can communities diverse. So then I can maybe write something else on this topic and uh, say, okay, what else can I say on the idea of the small world networks on the one side and diverse network structures on the other? You can also say that scale free. Well, let's say that most uh, small world networks are scale free. We can use our law detection to see the type of the network. Okay, so we add this idea in, and then, then it proposes a new idea again. So as you can see, it's quite a fluid way of adding data, and then you can click proceed, and it's always going to recommend you how you could work with the graph in an interesting way. If you click on next, how you can make new connections, how you can look at the different topics, and how you can detect interesting patterns within. So Jack is asking, is there an easy way to label edges as this would convert a mind map to a concept map? You're actually already uh, la labeling the edges by writing your statement. So for example, here, Every statement is a label to the edges that you create, but you don't have to only label one edge. You're actually labeling several of them. So for example, here is a label for the edges that connect network nodes and edges, you see? And if you click on this statement, then you can see the nodes and the edges that it's comprised of. At the same time here, if I choose another statement with a bit more concepts, it's the same thing. This is a description of the edges here. We sort of consciously decided to do it this way because um, labeling each edge separately would be too mundane um, and too slow. And here, as you can see, you can build a mind map pretty fast and you still have the descriptions of the edges. But if you just want to label one edge, you can also make a connection. Let's say you want to make a connection between propagation and resilience. And then you can write a comment that, let's say, networks that have an optimal level of propagation, not too high, not too low, are resilient. And here we're adding a description of this edge, which we can then access every time we need it. If I click on these two nodes, you will see that I will see all the descriptions of the connection between these two nodes. So here's the last one I added. And I can deselect the nodes here. Then Coin is asking, kindly demonstrate the use of synonyms. So this is a good point. As well, let's say I would like to be, uh, I'm adding some nodes uh, that are kind of the same in the graph. So for example, I wrote that uh, a node that has the high that has a high influence has high between the centrality. So I added this, but then I realized that actually it's the same as node. So I can simply select the two nodes that I want to link, then then click the chain button here and add it as a new graph, and then as a new node, sorry, and then it's shown in the graph here as one node. So I can merge nodes like this, and then I can unmerge them if I click here, 
or if I go into the info panel setting and then unmerge all and then we just need to reload the graph and the nodes are unmerged again so this is how you use the synonyms here I will demonstrate to you now um, a kind of more advanced example of how you can use this approach so this first demonstration was just to show you that you can use hashtags to, to enter your information and to create a mind map very easily in a rhizomatic way uh, that you don't have to draw it on the chart, although you can also actually click on the nodes here and create connections between them. This is also possible. And uh, what's interesting here is, by the way, if you just want to add a single node, so let's say that if you wanted to add a, a new node uh, and we call it uh, a page rank, for instance, right? So I just write in the name of the node then click plus, and then it's added here. It has a connection to itself. And then I can say that page rank is another measure of influence. Click save, the connection is added. Then you see it's connected to influence, page rank, between the centrality influence. So this is a nice connection because they are indeed connected. Here I have a triangle, the select and so on. So as you can see, you can add single nodes. You can use hashtags to add your nodes. You can then make connections between them and every statement you have as a description of the connection. And someone is asking an anonymous attendee, and if you don't add a hashtag, if there is no hashtags in the analyzed text, will the system independently select meaningful words and how will it do it? Frequency based. I'm going to show you how it works. Basically, if I don't add any hashtag, it actually depends on the setting I have. But normally, if there is no hashtags uh, in the text, by default, it's just going to process every word I type in. So for example, I will type in here between this centrality and degree are uh, often correlated. Okay. Um, but let's let's make it a bit longer. But not always. Some networks will have several nodes that have low degree but high between us centrality. So no hashtags here. Watch what happens when I add this. It actually, ah yeah, here <laughs> it didn't add anything because uh, I have a setting that uh, makes it impossible to add. Uh, new so here I have to set both hashtags and words and then if I go back to the graph so for example let's say I make a new one I'm just going to show you how it works here so between us centrality is a measure of influence just like degree but they are not always correlated add this into the graph i don't know as usually it happens in demonstrations when you are working and you want to show a feature something it's probably a setting that i have here so i'm going to try to fix this set it back to defaults then we try again. I'm sure, it's going to work now. Okay, let's use the same text. Okay, here we go. So you see, when you have the default settings, every word is represented as a node, and the co-occurrence is the connection between them. Um, it doesn't select the words based on how important they are in some kind of general corpus. It's actually choosing um, every word but it removes the most frequently mentioned one. So it kind of uses a TF um, IDF model, but here it has a list of stop words uh, like is, a, of, like, but, are, not. So th these are all not shown because they're kind of auxiliary words and the rest of the words are shown in the graph. So as you can see, between the centrality is shown separately between us centrality and then it goes to measure and then it goes to influence 
and then it goes to degree, and then it goes to correlated. So basically, it visualizes every word, and this is also quite a useful way of creating a mind map. So if you don't want to hashtag your stuff, you can just write things in this way. You know, you can say that um, a network's structure can be analyzed using modularity measure that detects distinct communities. Seats added here, measure, and then we have a new cluster. So basically, you could also just be writing your text um, in the plain text form, not using hashtags, and it will be visualized. But for mind maps, it's quite nice to use hashtags because then you can choose which words are actually visualized as a graph. You know, so here it's kind of uh, a more precise way of writing. But if you don't write anything, let's say you just We'll actually delete this and add it again. Then, then you can, you know, visualize it uh, just using the plain text as a result. So, I hope it answers the question. Sorry for the technical hiccup with the settings that I carefully prepared before. Now we move on to a more advanced example here, uh, where I want to show you how you can actually copy. Uh, like if you're learning some new information, reading a book, how you can write down this information using the mind map and represent your knowledge as a graph so that you can really quickly then have it as a reference. So here, uh, I will use again the mind mapping app and I prepared the book that is called The Scientist's and Engineer's Guide to Digital Signal Processing, which is quite the best seller, although it doesn't sell, it's available for free. It's a great book on signal processing and studying time series. And I'm just going to show you how it could be used if you were to learn a new subject and how it can be really useful as well in this case. So here, let's say I'm starting from the chapter two on statistics, probability and noise. I can select the sentence that I find interesting and important. So for example, here it says what a signal is. And I just copy it into the graph and I say, okay, signal is a description of how one parameter depends on another parameter. For example, most common type of signal is analog. Analog electronics is voltage that varies with time. Add this into the graph, show all the labels for all the nodes here. Then, as you can see, we have a connection between voltage, time parameter, signal. Then I go back to the text, add some more stuff into this graph. So, for example, I can say that, uh, let's say, I represent voltage. Okay, so I find some other important part of the text. Okay, here it's talking about time domain. So I take this paragraph, type in domain, is a widely used word in DSP, a signal that uses time. So I'm just selecting the concepts that are important to me by double clicking on them as a variable is set to be in the time domain. And this, I want to make it one word. So I'm just going to use the under dash and hashtag it like that. Okay, so I added some more data. Then I can go back to the book and add some information about the frequency domain. So one idea was that there is time domain, but another type of representation is when we use frequency as an independent variable. And this is called frequency domain. So I'm just going to select this. You see I'm selecting all the nodes that I find important and click Save. By the way, I could also do this without selecting the nodes. I could just add the text as it is, and it will be visualized as a graph. But if you already know a little bit uh, what the text is talking about, it's quite useful to focus your, your attention and to select the nodes that are important and that are more relevant to you, because then your graph will be clear. So this is just a way to do it in an easy manner. Then we move on. Let's say 
we finished with this chapter then we open another one and we say okay we want to actually write something down about what the mean means in statistics so the mean is the statistician statistician's jargon for the average value of a signal it is found just as you would expect add all the samples together and divide by n so i just write in mean signal average i just make this connection between them here we have them represented and then i can say that for example standard deviation is similar to the average deviation but it's calculated by adding the squares and taking the root from them so average deviation right here let's do it like that power amplitude so we are having all these different concepts in the graph and as you can see we have a new cluster of ideas uh, on the map and what's really good about this feature is that now you can use uh, the inside panel here to generate new ideas to indicate to yourself where you want to move next so here is proposing you to think of a connection between signal time variable and average power deviation so what is the relation between these nodes here so if i click on this rectangle i will see that it's talking about signal that uses time as the independent variable okay so it's about time domain and average power and the standard deviation so so basically it's proposing me to think what is the connection between representing the mean or the average of a signal and how it could be represented in the time domain so there i can already start thinking about uh, the fact that uh, let's say the mean is represented as a horizontal line in the time domain axis and the signal is is fluctuating around the mean so i can even write that down fluctuating around the mean in the time domain add this idea into the graph there is a new connection added here between those two I can also talk about power amplitude and the connection between the variables. So I can also use the graph to make the connections. Um, here I have an example of a map which was used, which was made using a slightly more concept. So you can see how I created it uh, in my own research. Usually what I like to do, let's say if I have a map like this, I like to first look at the overview of the graph. I see that it's about normal distribution and signal. But the signal is taking a lot of attention from the graph. So you can select the node, delete it, and see what's hiding behind it. Then you can see all the different clusters and topics that exist inside this text. And here you have uh, the composition frequency, normal distribution, probability, histograms, all those concepts that you use in statistics. And if you click on them, so, so for example, I want to remember what it means, the composition frequency. I click on it, I see all the statements where this combination of words has been used. So this is a pretty nice way to find very quickly the ideas that you're interested in at the moment and to refresh your knowledge of a certain subject to get in really quickly without starting from a central idea, but rather starting from what you're really interested in. I will answer some questions in the chat, which don't forget you can always ask uh, in the Q&A or in the chat as well, if you have any questions. So George is asking if I want to have Infranodos discover exploitable gaps in the implicit network of ideas presented in an essay of mine, then I have to add every statement one by one and highlight key thoughts, or can I just pour the whole text into your app and let it sort it out? Yes, you can pour the whole text in and let the app sort it out. I'm going to show you how it would work. It's quite a nice exp expression, by the way, that you use uh, exploitable gaps. I wonder what you mean by this exactly, but I like this. Um, maybe if you can write a little bit more about what you mean by that 
I would like to know. Normally, what we work with uh, in Fernodus is so-called structural gaps, which are the gaps in the network. I'm going to show you how it works. But here, I just copied and pasted the text, the whole text here. Click Save. And after a while, it's visualized as a graph where you can see all the main concepts. So for example, here I see that it's talking a lot about standard deviation. So I can actually make it into one node using the merge feature, which I showed before, just some kind of pre-processing. Then uh, sample number, okay, we can keep those two separate. And then I have the graph, then I go to the analytics and into the inside panel. And here it proposes me to look at the structural gap. So the two clusters or topics that could be better connected. As you can see, they're shown with a slightly similar color, but it's, it's actually two different topics. One is the signal noise and signal noise ratio. I can click on the little square to see in which context it's used. So it's talking about signal noise ratio. And then calculation type and dismiss. So it's talking about a kind of calculation or errors and calculations and the different ways of calculating the mean and standard deviation. And so the system is proposing me to think of a possible connection between these two topics. And then I can click further and see the connection between two other topics and so on. You know, So it's basically running you through all the structural gaps in the network and proposing you to think of the connections between uh, the topics which are not connected yet, what we call structural gaps. Maybe you mean this by the uh, exploitable, the exploitable gaps <clears throat> in what you wrote. In another program, Tom is saying such as Obsidian uses my node as a topic point. How will Infernodus use this instead of having to convert them to, to a node? Uh, Tom, I didn't really fully understand what you mean. I mean, they use Wikilinks so or square brackets to indicate hashtags. This can actually be used in Infernodus as well in the same way. You just need to change the setting because normally they use these categories. But if you go to uh, here, the setting on the square brackets, and you say that they are the only ones saved in the graph and also recorded as tags. Okay, so we save this. And then if you make a new graph, and let's say I type in between this centrality, square brackets, is a measure of influence. See, it's going to make a connection between them. So I can also use square, square tags, uh, wiki links to make the connections in the same way as hashtags. And of course, if you import your data from Roam Research or Obsidian, it's going to convert them exactly in the same way. So I'll show you later, by the way, how that works. I prepared my own Roam Research uh, bolt to analyze and to demonstrate. So uh, you'll see how it can be used for the same sort of purpose. Another question from George. Can Infernodus combine with Obsidian Graph View? How does Infernodus decide how to connect words in a sentence? So yes, it can connect uh, to Obsidian, Roam Research, and other tools that work with the uh, Markdown language. And uh, I'll show it later in a few minutes how that works. Um, to answer the question, how does Infernodus decide to connect words? I will demonstrate here. In fact, I think we have statement here yeah so you can see really easily how it works if i select the statement let's say this one here so infernodo starts from the first word which is not in the stop list in this case here a is in the stop list but network is not so i click on network this is the first word then it makes a connection with structure then it skips can and b because uh, these words are too often used then it goes to analyze and as you can see it also converts words into lemmas so instead of analyzed or analyzing it's going to be analyzed it's going to be uh, the root lemma of the word then modularity is the next word okay and then 
this four gram is a unit in Infranodus. Then the word network is removed. And then it looks, what is the next word? Measure. Okay, so then measure. Now the structure is removed. And then the next one is detects and so on. So you see it just bases itself on co-occurrence of words in the sentence. And it scans them in four grams. So four words at a time. A window of four words every time moving one word pass. And also what's interesting here about this algorithm which we developed is that you don't just connect the words that are next to each other, but you connect the words that are also one word or two words apart from each other. So for example, in the same case here, network structure, but you see that network is also connected to analyze, although it's, a, it's the third word. And it's also connecting to, to modularity, which is the fourth word. But the strength of the connection of the network to modularity directly is weaker than the strength of the connection to structure and analyze. Like this, you get a really nice view that represents the way that we perceive the text normally. You know, when we read, we are aware of a part that we are reading at the moment, or you're only aware of what I'm saying at the moment. You lose a little bit what I said maybe 30 seconds ago. And so we kind of scan and give more importance to what is happening right now, but leaving the traces of what has happened before as well. So this is how it works. I hope it explains the algorithm. Then Sylvia is asking, is there a limit to the amount of text for, for getting a comprehensive graph? Well, yes, it will not work so well if your text is huge because uh, this graph representation will become overwhelmed and you will have too much data. Already, you know, if I open my text here, even, you know, this one maybe. See, there's quite a lot of text, not much actually. This is quite dispersed. But if you have some, some text which has a lot of ideas, it's going to be very dense. And then it's going to be quite hard to read it. So I would say it works best uh, with the texts that, that you construct using this hashtag feature or just writing things into here. But you can also copy and paste essays, research papers one by one, uh, newspaper texts, you can import also a book, of course it's going to work, but then your, your graph will be too dense because there is a tendency of words to co-occur together more and more often and then you will end up with a really dense graph and it's going to be harder to extract some insights in a visual way like that. So I would say it works well for medium-sized texts or for snippets of texts, ideas, you know, notes that you have. Um, research paper is a very good size as well. So it's very good for when you want to analyze a, a few single texts. Then George is explaining what he meant by exploitable gaps. I meant structural gap where the new ideas can be discovered. Yes, I, I understand, thank you. And then uh, Changeta is asking, can we upload a table in Infranodus to develop mind maps? Yes, you can use the CSV import feature. So you just create a table in Google Sheets, for instance, where, let's say, I will demonstrate how, how that would work. So for example, you open Google Sheets and then, then you create a new one here and you would just say that, okay, concept A, concept B, and you say that between us Centrality is connected to influence. Degree is also connected to influence. Modularity, community, structure, and so on. And then you save it as a CSV file here. And then you import it using the Infranodus CSV import app right here. When you select the CSV file here, you will be able to choose which columns to import. In this case, you would import both, both of the columns, so you can see the connection between them. 
you could also use one column and just have uh, your ideas uh, in the rows of that column. It would visualize it as well. There's a lot of features here. I'll make another webinar on how to use this. But yes, basically, you can import Google Sheets. In a few moments, I will demonstrate you the last example on using ROM research data. But in the meanwhile, I'm just going to look at the more questions that we have. So in the Q&A section, Con is asking the uh, difference between the mind mapping mode and other input options, e.g. imports from text files. So basically in the mind mapping mode, um, it encourages you to use hashtags. It's actually almost the same approach. You can also just type in text here and it will be visualized as a graph. But some interface elements are better designed to let you add hashtags and uh, wiki links. And then also the kind of analysis or recommendation that it proposes is, is specifically designed for mind maps. You see here it says this mind map is empty, add something new, but if you were to type in a normal text, it would just propose you to write new ideas in a free form, not using hashtags. Then Stacy is asking the questions about the algorithm when I use this product how to make sure it's reasonable or rather if I want to, how can I use it in scientific research papers? To reviewers describing the methods I use or the index of the method used is generally allowed. Well, uh, if you go on the main page of Infranodus and then you click on the about section, it has a link to the research paper here our methodology in detail, and then you go to the SEM library, and you can see the peer-reviewed paper, which is basically talking about uh, the methods used inside. And I think you have this paper also on the Nodus Labs website. So if you don't want to access it via ACM, you can just open the PDF file here from the Nodus Labs website, and it explains everything in detail, how the bag of words model is used, how the connections are made, how the main topics are extracted, and everything else. It's a peer-reviewed paper, which I presented at the World Wide Web Conference in 2018. But there is also earlier research uh, which explains the approach in much more detail. Um, and you can find it on Google Scholar if you type in Infranodus or if you type in my name as well. Then another question uh, is from Nicole in the chat section. How do you hashtag or bracket more than one word? So you want to tag Monday morning rather than Monday and morning separate. Well, so you say it's Monday morning and I'm feeling like I really don't want to go to work. So you would hashtag Monday morning work then you add the connection here we go then uh, Cheng Dai is asking also how do we copy the graph to our thesis sorry for the basic question but I tried and couldn't do it sure uh, let's say we have this uh, graph here on word vector models and I want to save it. So I have an option here, export graph data. And then it proposes me multiple options. I can just save it as a PNG image, which is good to use for the internet. You can also save it as a vector image, which is a high resolution image. So you can print it five meters by five meters, or at least in a research paper, and it's going to be good quality. You can also download the graph, graph data as a JSON, CSV, Excel sheet or uh, GEX format that you can then open in Gephi and visualize it there. You can also just download only the text that you added as plain text or as CSV with tags. So you have all these different options. If you click on one of them, you'll see it downloads the file as an image. And by the way, you can of course also manipulate the graph before you download it to make it look nicer. So for example, you see here, these two terms overlap, so I can just select the node, move it a little bit here. I can also say that I actually want the label size to be proportional to the node size. And I want 
the labels to show for all the nodes. I can also set it to be straight lines and not curves if I want to. And if you're into art stuff, you can also just make it look abstract. And this can also be pretty beautiful, especially if you use the black and white mode, which is available in advanced settings here. So I hope this answers the question. Then uh, Sylvia Stajanova is asking, do you account for possessive nouns when you present relatedness between words? No, we don't. Uh, in this case, it doesn't use uh, any semantic analysis of the content because it just wants to show you what are the co-occurrences of words. And uh, you actually get quite a lot of information from there because you see uh, in which context the words are used together and uh, whether or not uh, the, the possessive nouns are used, uh, it becomes sort of less relevant here in this case. So this is why we're not using them. Alden is asking, the original paper was two and five word gaps. When, why did you decide to change that? Just curious. Actually, I was just experimenting with the different combinations and realized that uh, four words uh, work better in the sense that also it just looked uh, better visually and comparing to LDA models for topic detection, the results were better. It was performing much more efficiently and uh, making better visualizations. Then Maciek is saying, if you import a large text, say 50 pages of letters, how can I make sense or simplify the graph? Add hashtags to the imported text? Well, if you have a huge book, uh, the one thing that you could start from when you have a graph, I'll try to open a bigger one here. I don't really remember which one would be, but for example, maybe this one from Rome Research. This it's quite huge. I'm going to filter out the mentions. So we just see the concepts. And let's say that your graph is even more dense than that. So what I like to do first to simplify it is to reduce the number of nodes that are shown. Then you can do it in the filter panel here if you click on this button. And then you drag to show the nodes with a higher degree. So you already remove some of the nodes here. Then you can also connect some nodes which have the same meaning. So for example, if I think that brain activity is better as one word, I can just merge them into one node. Then it's going to be shown as uh, one node here. Actually, it becomes really small because uh, it looks like it's not really linking the groups in a better way than other nodes. Then also, let's say, patient conscious state also link this, you know, so you can kind of like build, build those nodes gradually. And this is how you would represent the text um, as a graph in a very sort of efficient way remove even more nodes, you know, and then export it using the graph save feature. So this is how you could do that. Then uh, Jack is saying this is an excellent method for distilling settled custom notes into insights or new ideas as in Tiago Fortas code acronym in way so knowing. Thank you, Jack. Yes, um, I use it a lot also for my own notes and I'm going to show you now in the end uh, of the webinar, how you can use it with Rome Research. It will be pretty interesting to see. Uh, Michael is saying, sometimes the nodes are displayed on a circle with the connections running through the circle. I was trying to go get to this view, but could not find it. Actually, it happens when you choose to use curves instead of lines. So if you choose curves here in the settings, it's going to show you the nodes linking to themselves. If there is a lone node, it's going to, like here, it's going to link to itself. So now I'm going to move on to demonstrate how Rome Research import works in this context, and then I will answer the rest of the questions. So first, also, 
it's always good to check the settings to see if you have them set just how you would like things to work. I will set them now to the default ones just so that we don't get any strange behaviors. And then I will show you here, I have uh, my ROM research uh, vault on fractal dimension of networks. It's something I'm studying at the moment, really fresh for me as well. I made a lot of notes with uh, ROM research on that subject, how we can measure fractality in a network. And when I go to the graph overview in ROM, as you know, is not so readable. So if I even click here, I realize, okay, I have these two documents which are connected to a lot of different concepts, but I have all these different concepts. And then I'm like, okay, so how can I remember what I was writing about? And here I have also the titles. Okay, maybe I can sort them by the title. So I see that there's something about fractals, maybe by word counts. Okay, also not so easy. Maybe by mentions. Okay, so this is more interesting. Scale free, fractal dimension. Okay, but, but I don't see how these terms are connected to each other and so on. So you see it's quite hard to use ROM research uh, in this way to understand what you're actually writing about and how all these ideas are connected, even though the software is about connecting ideas. Luckily, we have Infranodus for that. So all I need to do is export all. I export all the pages. And then I just need to unzip it and then go back to Infranodus, import ROM research, choose files. So I'm going to download into my folder and I select all those files. I think I have around 54 there, that's right. Then I choose what I would like to visualize. So if we want to see both the content and the connection between the nodes, which I think is a pretty good use case, then you can choose this first option, the content and the connection between the nodes. But some people just want to see the connections between their nodes only. So you can also leave this default option here. So I will choose the content and the connections and I will save it as a ROM graph. Click save. It gets all these nodes into the graph and visualizes them here. As you can see, really quickly, I can understand, let, let me just reload it so all the statements are shown because it took a bit of time. Yes, yeah, so here I can really quickly see what are the main topics in the whole discourse that I was exploring on that subject. What's great here is that we're building a mind map of our ideas, but we're using network analysis to represent it in such a way that the concepts that connect the different topics together are the most influential ones. So this is super interesting and useful that you can use uh, network science to actually analyze your own knowledge and ideas. I really like that. And here we see that I've been writing a lot about scale free and the color shows that there is a lot of ideas around this notion of scale free networks. Then obviously I write a lot about networks. I also write a lot about small world and fractal weight networks and fractal dimensions. So I can have a really nice and clear visual overview of the ideas. And not only that, I can also see which of them are more closely related because if the ideas are closely related, they'll, they'll be shown next to each other on the graph. And this is thanks to the wonderful force atlas algorithm, which was implemented into Sigma which is developed by Alexis Giacomi uh, and the Force Atlas algorithm was developed by his brother, Matthew Giacomi. So this is really like a powerhouse of network analysis. Both were involved with Gephi and uh, it's a beautiful representation of ideas where you can see how they are actually semantically close to each other just using this Force Atlas layout on the graph. So, so I can see here that the document that I wrote on fractal scale-free networks that are resistance, resistant to disease spread is close conceptually to the idea of fractal networks in my case, while fractal dimension is close to some other ideas, which maybe is an indication to me that I could make a new connection between those two.
ideas. So this is kind of like a general way of reading through the graph. Then the next thing that can be interesting to do is to go to the filter panel here and to say, okay, show me only the connections between the actual documents I had in my ROM research. If you use Obsidian, this would be the documents in your Obsidian. So here I can see how all these documents are connected. If I want to see the names of all the documents, I can click here, arrange them by, lab by label size. And here I can see a nice and clear visualization of the clusters of ideas that are connected together. So for instance, I'm interested in the fractal dimension and small world. I click on both of them and then I see all the statements where I use those two concepts together. As you can see here, one of them is talking about uh, scale-free property and small world property. And another one is talking about the connection between uh, the average path and clustering to the small small world property and how it can be used to measure the fractal dimension of a network. I can also see here that fractal dimension is connected to the idea of minimum box covering method, which is used to actually calculate uh, the fractal dimension. So then I'm starting to explore my knowledge in this way. And then if I go from the minimum box covering method to the fractal scale free networks, I see how this method was actually used in this paper, which I can then open and read more about using the minimum box covering method to calculate the fractality of a network. So as you can see, it becomes a really nice way to explore the connections between your documents in ROM research or in Obsidian. Now, if I switch the view here in the filter panel, and say, okay, I understand what the connections are between all those documents. Now I just want to see the ideas that I have inside. So if I was not interested, if I was not making the connections between them, here it's making them for me. I see the network is the main concept, so I can remove it from the graph. And then I see, okay, so there's something about model and average. So what about average? average virus computer so i can click on these three nodes and see that it's talking about this feature so uh scale free networks favors at the same time the spreading of computer viruses so scale free networks they are good for spreading viruses we analyze real data from computer virus infection and find the average lifetime and prevalence of viral strains on the internet. And here they're, they're talking about uh, fractal networks and uh, the absence of epidemic threshold in scale-free networks and how it exists actually in fractal networks. So there I kind of get a very clear idea of this particular concept. Then I can go to another part of the graph, explore it here. I can look at the power, Okay, so here it's talking about the human lungs and how you can also measure the fractal dimension of the networks of the bronchioles in the human lungs as well. And there I gradually remember how I was using those concepts and how they're connected. What's great here is that I can also use this inside panel here to recommend the next idea to think of. So I can click through until I find something I like. It says here, take a look at the graph and see if you detect interesting patterns or some interesting relations between spreading viruses and current weight finits. So let's see what it's talking about here. Final power. Okay, so it's about the connection between the nodes in the biological networks and then also the ability of the virus to spread so i can have an interesting idea here that maybe biological networks are built in a way that makes it hard for viruses to spread otherwise we wouldn't survive and so we can look into their structure and see how we can also structure technological networks as well based on similar principles i can write this idea in here and for that I can also use the interpret feature, which can be really interesting because if I don't want to change the whole graph, 
I can just write this idea into this network here in the interpret feature and I can say okay maybe we could use the ideas from biological networks to design technological networks that are resistant to viruses and have a more robust structure. Add this into the graph and you will see that the ideas I just added are highlighted with gray and like this I can quickly sort of navigate through the ideas that I wrote down before and create the new ones based on them. So this is what the interpret feature is for. I can also add that, uh, let's say if I filter the view to see only the concepts, and then I say that um, scale free networks <clears throat> are good in propagating viruses. Add this in, you see now it's selecting the nodes which I just added on the graph so I can see how my interpretation is actually covering the original ideas. I can also say that fractal networks have a higher epidemic threshold. Add this into the graph and I can see how those ideas are covered as well. And gradually, I can see how my interpretation compares to the original discourse I had. So this can also be a really nice way to add some comments on top of your existing ideas. And then you have a separate graph for that, which is going to be called meta here. And if you open this graph, you will have your ideas here in the in the interpretation overlay and they're shown gray on the graph. So here you see that I went around the periphery of my original ideas. If I want to get into the core, I should mention more concepts, dynamical spreading zone, and then I can export this as a text and use it to write an essay or, or a research paper. So this is how it could work. I will answer a few more questions now. So Julian is saying with large files or text, is there an option to set a maximum of nodes? So for example, the graph would represent the links between the 100 more frequent nodes. Yes, there is. By default, it's 150. If you go to the settings panel here, you will be able to change it here. So actually, I set it now to 500 in my case. You can also set it to 100 here, and uh, then it will only show 100 top nodes. Then uh, Michael Dan is asking, can you enter two URLs and have the two websites compared? Good question. I can show you a little hack that you can do using the Google app. So this Google app, it can visualize the Google search results for any query. Normally you could type in something like network science and then it, vis it visualizes the top search results for this, this keyword as a graph. Uh, what you can also do is to use Google's search language to actually push it to show you the results from the website. So here I'll compare Nodus Labs site. So for example, I'll type in site Nodus Labs. This is the syntax you use in Google to get the results only from this website. You see everything you have here is from Nodus Labs. And if I visualize it here it's going to represent the search results as a network and show what are the main terms according to google on the nodus labs website so obviously i need to delete nodus labs because these two words are used a lot and then i see that it's a lot about text network visualization it's a lot about practice, research, reading, graph, idea, make, interface. I can also click on the analytics panel and let Infranodus decide what the topical groups are for me. So one is the network text visualization, video part show. So we see that we demonstrate a lot of stuff using videos on our website, Nodus Labs. Then 
there's a lot of text about dynamical systems and how you can modulate uh, the behavior of the systems and then also case studies so there you get a clear idea of what this website is about now let's say you want to compare it to another graph you can click here and what's going to happen now is that you will represent um, another search query as a graph but what you can also do is to actually go and just make a new graph as well so you don't have to use the same menu here but you can go in the apps choose another website so for example let's say that we compare it to which one or maybe we can use quid if it still exists uh, how's ah, it's called now net based quid so this is kind of like high-end version of what infernados does but you have to pay think 9,000 euro instead of nine for what they have to offer. And here we can see what they are proposing. Okay, so we remove net based quid just like we did before. Then we see the main topical clusters. So we see that they talk a lot about Opportunities for insight, brand consumer business, social analytics media, partner Walmart retailer. So much more business minded uh, than than other slabs, and maybe that's why they can charge one thousand times more. But now, if I want to compare these two, I just click here. Uh, so you actually have two options here. One shows you uh, the um, overlap of two graphs. And the other one shows you how, how they're different. So I will choose the one which shows how they're different. And then I go in the menu and choose the previous graph. And then it's going to visualize those two graphs together and show how one is different from the other. It's going to take some time because uh, both are quite big. You can also, by the way, reduce the number of nodes shown. So if it was not 500, but a bit less, it would be a bit faster. That's why we choose 150 by default. So here it says, okay, uh, what exists in NetQuid that doesn't exist in Infernodus? Obviously, their brand is there. But then if we delete these two terms, we will see what else can be found. So we see that they talk about brand and consumer, something that not, not the Slabs is not talking about at all. Uh, they're also talking about influencer driven, something that not the Slabs is not talking about, and consumer business and partner. So we can see that they're kind of more focused on this idea of how their service can be useful for brand and businesses and analytics. And we are more research driven, so this is why we don't have this vocabulary. And this is how you compare the two websites. I hope it answers your question. I'll make another webinar on this topic and also how you can use Infernodo for search engine optimization. Then uh, Sylvia is asking if I import a text encoded in XML Tay with already established links marked with uh, ref target tags. Would this be recognized? Um, I don't really know this format. So if you could just send us some example to this email that I just wrote in the chat, I will be happy to check for you and uh, respond and see if we can integrate it if it's not possible yet. Simple Chinese can be used to analyze an infernodus is asking Stacy. We're working on this. Uh, one reason is that I don't speak Chinese, uh, so it's a bit hard to understand how it should be done correctly. So we need a Chinese speaking person to help us with that. If you're interested to do that, please leave us a note to this email that I just wrote uh, in the chat, info at nodoslabs.com, or just contact us using the support panel on Infernodus. I will be happy to work on this with you. and. By the way, I think it's going to look really beautiful when you have uh, hieroglyphs instead of the words.
it's going to be like some kind of cosmic language. So I'm really lo looking forward to have Chinese and Japanese, Korean as well uh, in, in Pranodos. But we need the support of our users for that. Nicole is asking, is it possible to make a timeline chronology within Pranodos? Yes, it makes a chronology for you. So maybe the best example is to show you using the example of Twitter import app. So here it visualizes the discourse uh, from the last week, the most popular tweets that were liked and shared a lot in the recent week. And you have a special timeline uh, control panel in the settings, which you can use to show how the discourse evolved over time. So if you click here on filter, it says filter time range. So you go like this and then you drag this part. Then it shows you, okay, so people are talking about people, state, Bengal, violence, and it was about death and hyphen, people, violence. So a lot about people and violence, but kind of changing the topics over time. Another way to visualize this is to use this nice feature of playing the graph like a movie. So you can actually turn this on and then whatever you scroll to is shown on the graph. So you can scroll it manually and see how the discourse evolved. It's only showing on the graph the statements that you can see on the left hand side. You, you can also launch it and just let it play for you. So you can observe how the discourse was actually formed over time, which can be pretty interesting. And yeah, you can use these two ways to do it. And you can also, of course, do it with uh, the text that we just added as mind maps. Um, just the same thing, you know, if you were adding a text over some period of time, you could as well use the filter here, and then you will see how the discourse evolved over time. And thank you to everyone who says thank you for the webinar. Really happy to hear this, to have your feedback. Thank you, Jack and uh, Livin and Pantaleon and everyone else. And uh, yes, I think I showed everything I wanted to demonstrate today. Thank you very much for taking the time to be here with me and uh, feel free to send your suggestions for what you would like the next webinars to be about. You can always connect to us over our support portal here. I'm sending the link and also via this email info at nodoslabs.com or on Twitter, nodoslabs. And I think I will do another webinar in two weeks. I was thinking to do it on how you can use uh, network visualization to analyze your own data that Facebook stores on you or that you store in your notes or in some other tools that track your behavior. So this is something I'm still thinking about. If you're interested in that, let me know. Otherwise, also please suggest your ideas. And as always, you know, I'm always happy to answer questions. So if we choose a topic, we can always shift to another one if it's interesting for you. Thank you very much again for being here. It was uh, many people and it was a pleasure to have you all. And I hope it gave you some nice ideas on how you can use Infernotus. I really want to promote this mind mapping feature because uh, not many people are using it this way. But since I implemented it, I'm actually using it all the time to learn new things. And I find it very useful that you can use it with hashtags, square brackets, that you can import your stuff from Obsidian ROM research. So please try it out. And if you have some ideas about how usability could be improved, I would be really happy to hear from you and uh, you know, um, implement all the suggestions into uh, the tool. And thanks again to everyone who said thank you. Thank you back. And Nicole said, uh, how about mapping a cloud drive? Um, it's next on the list. We just need to figure out how to work and to process bigger amounts of data, but we're working on this. We're actually reprogramming the backend so it can handle much 
bigger chunks of data. And once we do that, you will be able to just, uh, you know, upload all your hard drive into it and uh, see the connections between your documents and zoom in and see what each document is about and what are the terms connecting them. So it's going to be implemented. Just need a little bit of time for that. Maybe a few months. Hopefully by this autumn, we'll have something. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. This webinar will also be available on our YouTube channel. I'm going to send the link now so you can find it later as well as the other videos that I have posted there as well. Uh, for those of you who are still here, I have another poll, which I think you can see now. Um, if you could just tell me which mind, mind mapping tools you like to use normally, um, I would like to see uh, what are the ones that are your favorite. And I will post in the meanwhile a link to our YouTube channel so you can also find this webinar later and share it with whoever might be interested in this information. So let me just select it here and I will put it in the chat as well. Okay, so there are some suggestions about my mapping tools that I'm going to write down and make a Google search on them. Oh, I see that Infranodus is being used by quite some, some people. This is great. Miro is second. MindMeister, MindMap. Great. Milanot. Okay, mind manager, I'm going to also copy that. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. And I will say goodbye for now. And uh, I will let you know in the next days when the next webinar will be. Send me your suggestions and ideas. And uh, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. And goodbye.